All right, everybody, what is up? I hope you guys are all doing really well. Uh, it's been a while since I put out some content, but I'm working on a project and I'm in a situation and it's kind of a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a very long time. Um, the other day I was just kind of, you know, destroying my brain cells watching YouTube and I came across a channel where a gentleman who has a much larger channel than me um, who owns a company building welding fixtures and all that other stuff. Um, he sent out some projects to three different fab shops with the simple request and very detailed plans of um, just simply build, build a square for me, make a square with some legs on it and that's it. So over the course of the video, this guy, he went and picks up his materials and he asked these fabricators a bunch of questions, you know, you know what process? You know what process did you use on on fabricating it? And like, uh, you know, it just, it just kind of got really like I just lost interest really quickly. But I was also very very disappointed in the overall um, genre of fabricators out there. So the reason why I think this gentleman is is making this video is to. Um, to set up a, a really good scenario for selling his products, like it'll just automatically make you a better fabricator and all this shit. And so I want to show you guys, first of all, how, how to build square on the cheap without spending a fortune on specialty tools and all that other stuff. Um, it's cool if, if you're down to make parts for the F-22 and you, and you have a disposable income. But another thing too is when you start spending tons of money on expensive tools, that's great, but it also cuts into your profit margin. And then they're, they're only great until one of your asshole employees walk off of them or one of your asshole employee drives over it with a forklift. Um, so let's get into this. So first I wanna start off with um, like making welding videos and all that stuff, it's great. Like running stringers is great, um, but it's easy to make perfect welds in a candy ass situation in your shop and explaining all the hows and whys of all the different rods and all that other shit. And then there is the other aspect of being a fabricator. Being a good fabricator and being a good welder are two very different things. First of all, let me get you guys turned around. So as I watched that video that I forementioned about um, a lot of these different fabricators, their first excuse was when they were asked, well, gee, you know, it seems like this is out of square or this is out this way or the pitch is off or the yaw is off or like, you know, the, the atoms are off. You guys put some effort into making your table flat. If that means you have to build up a really good frame and get a, a magnetic drill and drill and tap and put a straight edge on your table and manipulate your table, it's easy to do. It might take you a day, but you can, you can get a flat or a sweet spot in your table. Number two is if you wanna build it square on the cheap, get some angle iron and make a box that your, your square or whatever, if it's gonna be a repeatable thing, um, build a box. Make sure, you, and then um, what I do is I'll take my framing square, use a steel framing square, check it with a machinist square to make sure it's square and true. Check your square, check your box. You know, taste the soup as you work, if that makes sense. Um, and then make sure it'll, like, so this way it, it will be square at the end of the day. Um, you know, if, and it's, you, you, you're never too old to learn something. And I was just very, kind of disappointed like you know a lot of these fabricators just kind of had like like a shitty attitude and I don't know if that just comes with time or what but anyways let me see if I could get you guys in the stand here and we'll just see if I could kind of uh, throw one together I might uh, kind of fumble a little bit but I just want to get this idea out there to help you guys out um, because being a good fabricator is better than just running like pretty stringers all day is as fun as that is so sit tight all right, I hope you guys can see all that, so let's go.
Another thing too is kind of check your high low right there and just see if you can flatten it out a little bit. If you're wanting, you can go ahead and recheck re it. I'm good. Recheck it. I'm good. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is when I'm gonna attack it, I'm gonna attack this corner here because I wanna draw in my outside corners because always remember guys, the welds are gonna shrink. So you wanna pull in your outside corners first and then you wanna come back around and tack your inside and then draw in your inside corner. So this way all of your, 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 uh, your compression or it's, it's all, it's uniform and you're, and you're distributing the tension evenly. You know, it doesn't hurt to double check it with your tape. If this is still recording, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm within about a, a 16th plus or minus. So I'm gonna go ahead and pack it again. Actually, I'm gonna pull this in like that, suck it in like that. Sorry, I got a phone call. Of course, someone's trying to call me right when I'm... There you go, I'm within a 16th. low. I probably shouldn't be checking that with, with gloves on. There you go. Once again, we're going to hit the outside, if you guys can hear me. And then get your inside. And there you go. Anyways, all right, I need both hands to kind of to pull this one out. 
So let me get you guys turned around. All right, you guys, I hope you found this informative and I hope that you can uh, utilize this technique and uh, make some money with it because that's the entire point of this is being able to help you guys get your products turned around quickly and efficiently and most importantly making sure that they're square and true while you're keeping your overhead and your cost down um, as always please like comment and subscribe thanks again for joining me in this madness and i will see you on the next one peace out